In this video, I'm going to tackle a very confusing but fundamental and important topic in JavaScript programming, something called a closure. Um, it's a big topic, and I think I probably could do several different videos around it, and I could also probably slow into it a bit more. But in this video, I'm just going to look at it in the context of set interval uh, and kind of unpack everything that has to do with a closure with this particular example. And then things will be confusing, and you'll feel a little weirded out, and I'll come back and make some more videos based on questions people ask with some other scenarios that will hopefully make this more clear. But let's just give it a try. I'm going to give it a try. You can give it a try by watching, and I think it's going to be OK. So what is the scenario here? The scenario here is that I have, uh, and the canvas is irrelevant. It's just sort of there to show that I could also have a canvas animating. The thing that's important here are these two particular DOM elements. One of which you can see is counting up uh, a number every 500 milliseconds. You could think of any other types of things you might do with a DOM element that's doing some type of animation. And the second one is not animating at all. So how is the first one animating? Now, first of all, again, I'm using set interval. In a separate video that I will reference at some point, I'm going to look at why you might use request animation frame instead of set interval. But for simplicity, I'm using set interval right here. So what set interval does is it says, call this function time it right here every 500 milliseconds. So every 500 milliseconds, increment a counter and update the HTML content of that element by that amount. So what if I want to do the same thing for the second DOM element? Well, certainly, I could just add timer2.html you know, counter. And we would see here that both of them are lockstep and in sync, but there's only one function being triggered. What if I want each one of them to have their own interval? So they each get their own counter, or they each get their own um, time that they wait to increment that counter. You might think of it, here's a nice way of thinking about this. What if you had an object, right? Even if you like programmed in Java or C++, and even JavaScript, you had an object. Each one of these things was an object, and it had properties associated with it. It had a counter, and it had an amount of time it waits to increment the counter. A closure in JavaScript is actually a way of doing something very similar to object-oriented programming, where I want to bottle up. I want to create this little container, this bubble, this closure bubble that has all the stuff that has to do with each one of those DOM elements. And how do I create that bubble? So let's come over here for a second. And Let's just say, and I feel like I'm in the darkness today for some reason, but I don't know why this seems darker than usual, but it is what it is. You can hopefully see me and read this. Um, so let's just think about functions in JavaScript for a second. Uh, function uh, rainbow, right? You have set up and draw in P5, and there's all sorts of window on low. There's all sorts of functions you can write and define in JavaScript all the time. And I could have another function down here. Uh, I could call it, I don't know, what's, uh, what's similar to a unicorn, for lack of a better thing to think of. And now I have two functions, each one of them defined separately outside of each other. And incidentally, uh, if this is no different in JavaScript. And now I am really easing my way into this. But to say var rainbow equals function, right? A function is just a thing that you store in a variable. This function is stored in the variable rainbow. This function is stored in the variable rainbow. And in JavaScript, then, it's totally reasonable that you might define a function inside another one. So this unicorn function could be defined right inside of here. This means unicorn is a local variable to the rainbow function. So if I were to call unicorn here, that would be totally reasonable. That would work. If I were to call unicorn down here, I could not call unicorn down here because it's out of scope, because unicorn is now only local to rainbow. Now, what if I had a variable here? Like, uh, what goes with pot of gold? I don't know. <laughs> what goes with rainbows? Uh, stars. <laughs> Uh, I have a stars a variable which equals 15. Oh boy. Why did I just use a counter? This is, I'm like so like lost in my world of rainbows, which is just ridiculous at this point. And it's kind of embarrassing. Uh, so what if I have a counter variable in here? This is also a local variable to the rainbow function. Now let's think about this. When I call the rainbow function, that means this code should be executing, which means somewhere in the computer's memory, a counter is made and stored. 
What if I call the rainbow function again? Well, if I call it again, a new counter is made. These local variables inside of a function are things that are generated again and again every time you call the function. That should almost be, in a way, intuitive or not. This may be something you haven't thought of before, but this is something you've definitely used before. The same is true of this function. Each time I call rainbow, a new function unicorn is declared and defined, which in some cases might be very inefficient, which is why sometimes I, I don't want to like redeclare that function all the time. If rainbow is happening over and over again, I would want to have it outside, just use it in there. But what if you wanted this function to operate differently each time you called rainbow? Well, this is precisely, so this, by the way, is a closure. A closure is a function being enclosed in another function and and this idea of all of this stuff being maintained, all this data, the variable, this function, and including arguments that might be passed in here, as uh, each time you call the rainbow function, this bubble is made, which a counter is stored, and a reference to this unicorn function is stored. Now, there's all sorts of weirdness and strange things that you could do with this newfound power of putting a function inside a function, and I would love to get to all of these scenarios in all of my videos, but let's come back to here. This is precisely what I want in this particular scenario, right? Because what I want are two counters. So if I say I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just make up a function for a second. Make uh, animation. I don't know if that's. Oh, make 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 timer. Make timer animation. I don't know what to call it, right? And then I'm going to define that function. Make timer. Whoops. I'm defining it, and I say var counter equals zero. So what I want to do is each time I make the timer, I get a new counter. So I could certainly call make timer twice. So that makes a counter variable twice. Local only to this make timer function, but that's going to be fine. Why? Because here, set interval is going to be called inside the make timer function. And if set interval is called inside the make timer, right, counter is no longer a global variable. Then I can define, here's a nice little closure for you, this time it function can be defined in here. Take out this one. Look what's happening here. Each time, each, so each time I call make timer, I create a counter, I set the interval, and this function makes use of that particular counter. So one thing that's really important about thinking about scope in JavaScript, oh, I, I love this stuff. It's kind of like weird to think about, but it's really interesting, is that the scope isn't just where your variables are declared, but kind of like when things happen. Like this function is all set and done, but the set interval means time it is going to happen later and later and later. So the closure, even though this function is executed and finished, all of the things made in here, all the stuff stored in memory is maintained. It's maintained as long as something still needs it, and time it still needs it because set interval will be calling it again and again. So let's just look at this, and I'm going to call it just once. So this should work for just timer one. Let's look at this. You can see timer one is now counting up, right? That's, it's doing exactly what we want it to do. Why is it doing that? Because we create a counter, we call set interval, and every 500 milliseconds, the counter is incremented and the DOM element is updated. But now, I have this function make timer. It's only working for timer one because timer one is hard coded inside there. So why not just say, I'm going to just give it an argument and call it ELT, any generic element. So now I want to make a timer for timer one. Same exact result. But now I can, this is the magic, the magic of the closure. I can make the timer for timer two. So this whole bubble, this closure bubble, it's almost like this object, this counter, this time it function, this set interval. Each one of these will be done again each time I call that function for timer one and timer two. The closure being this function, in even though this function is happening later and later and later in life in <laughs> the, while the program's running, the, all the stuff around it is maintained in memory for it. So now if we run this, we can see both of them. Oh boy, what, oh, what, so what happened? I made a fatal flaw here. I still hard coded in timer one. So I have to change that obviously to ELT. The point is to take the DOM element that's passed in and then use update that one's particular. Um, and you can see now, here they are. They're both going. Why? They're both going exactly at 500 milliseconds each. So what if I add another ar argument here? 500 and, you know, 
And uh, this one will be at 312. So totally arbitrary. And I add an argument here called uh, wait. And now I add wait there. So now when I call make timer, and I forgot a parenthesis here, what I'm doing is saying make this closure, create a counter, start a set interval process with a particular function. And remember that function, this function, if I were to put this right not as a closure but out here, it wouldn't make any sense because ELT and counter don't have any scope out here in the global scope. So I need that function to be redeclared each time inside of make timer. And here we go. Let's make this happen. Okay, look at this. And you can see now each one individually is just operating on its own time because they both been triggered with one with 500 milliseconds and one with 312. And this is a closure. So I could add a third DOM element and a fourth one. I could do this in a loop where I could have them all animate. I could start and stop them. I could store a reference to the interval with different buttons. When I click on it, it starts. When I click off of it, it stops. So uh, there's a lot of possibilities here. What I might suggest to you is think about, you know, try to use this exact framework and think about like, well, what's something more interesting you could do in terms of color or something else besides just counting numbers? Um, the other thing that I might consider is what happens if you put those DOM elements into an array? Can you loop through them and execute a closure for all of them to have them all doing some type of animation, um, that sort of thing. So uh, I hope this helps you get started with this idea of understanding what a JavaScript closure is and what it's for. I think this will come up again and again in videos that I make. It certainly comes up a lot when making multiple API queries. Um, it comes up, uh, I, I think an example that I want to make that looks up playing a musical melody, it can come up if I have an array of notes and I want them each to happen a certain period of time. So I look forward to your questions uh, and see if I can come back and make some more videos to clear up anything or to cover this more again. So thanks for watching. I can't believe I just made a video about a closure, which is something that I'd never even heard of like less than a year ago. I probably heard of it, but was like, I don't know what that is. Uh, so hopefully this made sense and was correct. So the internet will correct me, I'm sure if I was wrong, and I will see you all sometime soon. Good. Oh, and this was only 12 minutes. I think that's kind of amazing. <laughs>